Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Connexpert Q&A where we think outside the box and answer all of your Connex related questions. My name is John and I'm the lead Connex designer at Basic Fun and also your friendly neighborhood Connexpert. All right, let's take a look at the queue. So it looks like our question today is, how do I troubleshoot a Kinex roller coaster? Okay, so this is a really good question because Kinex has made tons of coasters throughout the years. And although they're all very different, they share some common characteristics where some basic troubleshooting techniques can really solve any problems you're running into with your coaster. So for today's example, I'm gonna use this set right here. This is our 80216 Amazing 8 roller coaster available on both Amazon and Amazon UK. This set includes 448 pieces and stands just over two and a half feet tall once complete. This is graded ages seven plus, has a motor and is made mostly of micro kinetics. So to go over this, I'm gonna unbox the set. I'm gonna separate out the pieces and then I'm gonna start building, sharing some tips and tricks as I go along. Once I get to the end, I'll show some common places where things can go wrong and how to fix them to make sure that your coaster works consistently and well once it's ready to go. All right, let's get started. So if we open up to the first page, this is going to include important safety information. Because this coaster has small parts, this is not meant for children under three years of age. Also, because this coaster has a motor, keep hands, face, hair, and clothing away from all the moving parts. Lastly, be careful not to tip the model over. The model should be placed on a flat and hard surface, both during construction and when it's turned on. The next page includes battery information and information about the motor. While we've got this page open, we might as well install the batteries. To do this, you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver. You'll notice the battery cap here. Untighten the screw and then just put that battery cap off to the side. The easiest way to install the batteries is to make sure the Kinex logo sticker is facing down. Now take your first AA battery and drop it in just like this into the bottom right hand corner of the battery housing. Then take your other AA battery and then drop that into the upper left hand corner. Take the battery cap, press it in, and then just take your screwdriver and tighten up the screw. To test the motor, flip it over. You'll see the switch here. Now your motor's good to go when you need to install it into the build. And if we flip the page to page four, this goes over building basics, how the pieces go together, and best building practices to ensure a smooth and easy assembly. Also note here are these special connectors called four slot connectors and seven slot connectors. These specific connectors allow Connect's 2D shapes to turn into 3D structures. So if I take a seven slot connector and take a four slot connector, you'll see that you can slide them together really easily. Once you get them to this point, just take your thumb and your index finger and then press together. You'll hear that click and that ensures that they're fully engaged. To separate them, take your thumb on the edge of the seven slot connector and then use your index finger on the blue connector and just press them apart. Now, if you're limited in your hand strength or your dexterity, there's an easy tool you can create to help you out with this. Take your eight connector and also your transition rod and just snap them together like so. And then just do that a second time and you've essentially created two handles. So then all you have to do is attach your four slot connector here, your seven slot connector here, and then you have an easier way to hold onto these, guide them into position, and press them together. Then to pull them apart, it's really easy to do just like that. The next part mentioned in this page is the chain link. In order for these to be assembled correctly, take a chain link just like so, and note the opening on this side. Then take another chain link and make sure that opening is also on the same side. Line them up together, and then just press together with your index finger and your thumb. 
If they're connected fully and correctly, you'll notice that they'll hinge very smoothly and easily. Okay, now on page five, you'll see the parts list. This includes every single part included in the set. Take a look and make sure that every part listed on this page is included in your Connects building set. If you find that you're missing any pieces, go to the basicfund.com website, support tab, customer support, and then select Connects. In order to request replacement parts, make sure you use these part numbers, which are listed below the image of the part. If we flip to the next page, this will begin the actual Connects build. With any Connects instruction manual for a roller coaster, the same progression of steps will occur. First, the frame will be constructed. This supports the track of the coaster. Then the track will be added one piece at a time to the frame. Lastly, the chain will be added. Okay, let's begin the build. Okay, at this point, the frame or the structure of the Kinex roller coaster is complete. But before we move on to adding the track, we're gonna check a few things to make sure this is good to go. First, make sure all these four slot and seven slot connectors are fully engaged. If they are not engaged, it will cause the entire structure to flex and come out of alignment. At the same point too, make sure that all these long orange rods are fully engaged into the structure. If they're not, that will allow flexing to occur, which is not good for the coaster. Lastly, make sure that the black sprockets are dead center in the structure. And the reason for this is that the chain will eventually wrap around both sprockets. If either of them are misaligned, the chain will no longer be perpendicular and then it will not catch the car and release it properly. So before we start connecting the track to the frame of the coaster, these are a few really good track building tips on this page here. Whenever you're connecting a piece of track to another, you're just going to connect them end to end just like so. And you'll hear that snap. To disconnect the track, just press down with your thumb and then pull it apart. There's a top side of the track, which is this here. It's indicated by this nub on this connection point. And then this is the bottom side of the track. You're always going to attach connectors to either the bottom side of the track or from the sides, never from the top. So if I use a straight connector here, I can snap that on the bottom and you'll hear that click. It's nice and secure. Now, if I try to connect it from the top, you're not gonna hear a click and then that's easily gonna pop right off and that's gonna be an unsecure connection. Now, if I wanna go into the side, you can do that as well with a three connector. That'll click like that and you can go from the other side as well. But again, if you try to connect from the top of the coaster track, that's gonna pop right off. So again, from the bottom or from either sides, never connect the top. Okay, now that all the track has been connected to the frame, we're now ready to add the chain. Before we do this, make sure that all the chain links are fully connected and to make sure that this has been completed, take the chain and then run it through your thumb and your index finger. Make sure everything feels smooth and continuous. If at any point you feel that something's off or there's a bump, what you can do is just take the chain and then press it together. You'll hear that click and then you're good to go. Okay, so to add in the chain, first I'm just gonna remove this rod here and that's just to get a better view with the camera. The best way to do this is really start at the top, go over the top chain guard, and then just start feeding the chain over the top sprocket and just let gravity pull the chain down. Make sure the chain goes between this blue rod 
and these two red rods here. Just keep feeding it through. And then at this point, you wanna make sure the chain goes over this side of the sprocket and then goes between the track before coming out this opening. And again, just let it fall through here. Once you get it to this point, all you're gonna do is take both ends and then connect them together. And then make sure the chain is running between the chain guards here. At this point, I'm gonna add this rod back into the structure. And then I'm just gonna test it out by turning on the motor. Then I'm gonna switch directions. And it looks like everything's good to go. All right, now we're on our final step. We're just gonna add the car onto the track. To do this, all you're gonna do is disconnect two pieces of track that are easily accessible. I'm gonna take these two here, disconnect them, then just take the coaster car, slide it on, and then just reconnect the two pieces of track. Then I'm just gonna slide the car along here and let that catch onto the chain drive. Now the only thing left to do is turn the motor on. All right, I hope that was helpful. Like and subscribe below so you don't miss out on the next episode. Also, leave us a comment if you have questions you'd like answered on Ask a Connexpert Q&A. My name is John, reminding you to think outside the blocks with Connects.